Welcome to PlayPianoToday.com. This piano lesson focuses in on your left hand. The title is Suspended Tritone Shell Chords. Today we're going to study something that I think is really quite significant. It sounds like a mouthful. The title is Suspended Tritone Shell Chords, which sounds really complicated until you hear it. Here it is in a different location. By themselves, they may not be that exciting, but when you play them in context, they really come alive. Let me do that now. I'll play them in context. I'll play some bass lines with my left hand as well, and I'll throw in some right hand blues riffs just to give you some context. But what I'd really like to focus in on are these suspended tritone shell chords for your left hand. There it is. And again. They're very simple to play, but they provide a really funky groove in the left hand. And then if you add some right hand blues riffs up on top. This is going to be a great lesson for your left hand. Using these suspended tritone shell chords is a super effective technique. Let's dig into it. A lot of what we're studying today is based on things we've studied before. For instance, this is a D7 chord. We studied every conceivable type of seventh chord in our course titled Pattern Piano and Keyboard. You can find that on our main website at playpianotoday.com. If you haven't gone through Pattern Piano and Keyboard, I really would recommend it's a great investment in time. But if you've done that, and I'm going to assume that you've done that already, you'd know what the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh of this D7 chord is. Now, in our blues course, chapters 14 and 16, we learned how to take dominant seven chords and turn them into tritone shell chords, which really is one of the bread and butter pieces of blues and jazz. So if you take the root and the fifth out of a dominant seven chord, you're left with a shell. This is really a shell of its former self. You have the third and the seventh, but now it implies a D chord. But listen how nice and open that is. Now if I play some right hand D scale blues riffs, you have a nice open sound, it's not too cluttered, and it's implying this. Shell chords are so powerful. Now let's talk about inverting this shell chord. We're going to get to the suspended part of this lesson in just a minute. But again, if you went through pattern piano and keyboard, you would know that to invert a chord, you simply take the bottom note and flip it up on top. So we had an F sharp and a C, right? So now if I invert this F sharp up, you haven't changed the function of this tritone shell chord yet. The function is identical, but now you can move around a little bit because it's really the same exact notes, just in a different register. How about if I inverted it down? If I took the top note and put it down here? Now you've got a little movement, right? Now to take this tritone shell chord and learn to suspend it, and give it some movement, which you can use all over. We're gonna jump back just for a minute to the beginning of that course titled Pattern, Piano, and Keyboard, where we studied that there's a simple pattern that will give you the first five notes of any major scale. That's why they all kind of sound the same, no matter where you play them. Now, 
The black and white notes look different, but the musical distances are always the same, right? You know that. So if you start with that pattern, for instance on D, it will always give you the root, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth of any major scale, which we then use to build basic triads by playing the root, the third, and the fifth. For instance, that's a D major triad. If you did it on C, you'd play the root, the third, and fifth, and it would give you a C major triad. Let's go back to D. One, two, three, four, five. Now, to suspend a triad, as you know, you take the third and you replace it with the fourth. And it sounds like it wants to drop to the third, doesn't it? Hear, hear that movement? Let's do it on F. So then we play the root, the third, and the fifth. And we replace the third with the fourth. It really sounds like it wants to drop down, doesn't it? That's what a suspended chord. In fact, that's why they call it a suspended chord, because it's hanging. It wants to drop. Now you can do the exact same thing with a seventh chord. Again, here's D7, or another name for this is D dominant seven. You simply take that third and replace it with a fourth. Now we have a suspended D7 chord. It's kind of a big sound, right? It wants to drop as well. Now I'm not playing a shell chord yet because I'm playing all the notes. But if I went back to the shell chord, how do you make that? You take the root out, you take the fifth out, you have the third and the seventh, right? Now let's suspend it. What do I do? We take that third and instead play the fourth, and you can drop it down to the third to resolve it. All of a sudden you have some movement that implies a D. How nice that is. What if I invert it down, okay? Remember we did that earlier in this lesson? What if I take that C up on top and I put it down here? I still have the third, right? That remains the third, and this remains the seventh, even though it changed registers. That's really a tough one for a lot of folks to get. How can it be the seventh here and it's the seventh down here? Because it's the same note. It's still a C, right? A C is a C is a C, doesn't matter where it is, whether the whales are singing it down low or the birds are singing it up high. A C is always a C. So now, let's make it suspended no matter where we play it. We just move the third. Now let's invert it. Now that's kind of a mind bender, isn't it? What's moving? A C is dropping an octave. But it's still a C, so let's say it's not moving, okay? Just humor me. It's still a C, so we'll say that isn't moving. It's the fourth that's suspending and then resolving to the third. Now you've got a suspended tritone shell chord. It's really a simple little sound, but just so nice and funky. One really cool thing that also gives it some rhythm is to hit the root down on the bottom before you play that suspended shell chord. Now we were studying a D7 chord, right? So the root is D. So I'd hit that D and then I'd go up and play the suspended shell chord like this. Right? And do it again. Now this time I'll play the inverted shell chord, right? I take that top note on the bottom. And maybe I'll go back and forth. Maybe you want to get a little more creative with the left hand, which is cool. Instead of just hitting that root in the left hand, maybe you could do something like walking up to it and give it some, you know, melodic character like this. All of a sudden your ear gets drawn in. And nice. Uh, 
Um, one other thing I really like to do, instead of walking up to a bass note like that, I like to start two half steps below. Now, as you know, a half step means go to the very next note either way. We're going to go two half steps down. So the very next note is here, and one more is here. So I go here, and I roll up to the target note where I'm going like this. I'm going very slow, but up to speed, I, I do it like this. And then I repeat it. So the whole thing sounds like this. It's not a lot of character there, but there's just enough to make it sound kind of like an authentic bass. Maybe you alternate it with the walk. So the next thing we're going to do, of course, is apply it to other chords, as I'm so wont to do. Let's apply this to the blues. Now this lesson really is for the left hand, but you've noticed my right hand, I'm playing um, lots of bluesy stuff. But that really comes from Blues Chapter 11 from our website, where we studied every conceivable kind of blues scale. And I'm playing the D blues scale as well as some of the riffs and tricks that we've learned in the blues course. I have so many people uh, email me constantly, and they say, you know what, I took a quick look at Blues 11, and I didn't spend a lot of time, but then I went back to it, and I've really been studying it every day, and my hands are coming up to speed. So, you know, that's a little plug, but I sincerely believe in that. So go through Blues Chapter 11, and you'll be able to play all your blues scales. So now let's go ahead and apply this left hand suspended tritone shell chord to the chords in the 12 bar blues will be in the key of D. 12 bar major blues in D is made up of the D major chord, the G major chord, and the A major chord, right? So we're gonna use the technique that we studied today, that suspended tritone shell chord over these three different chords. We know what it sounds like in D, we studied that. And then we took that suspended tritone shell chord and I inverted it down. It's that nice, warm, low character. How about the other chords that show up in the blues when you're playing like this? How about uh, G? Let's just listen to that. And nice, nice and mellow. How about if I took it and inverted it up this time? We'll study what those notes are in a minute, but you get the principle. I'm taking that suspended shell chord and I'm simply flopping the notes back and forth, inverting it. The other chord that shows up in this 12 bar blues is A. Real similar. And I can invert this up as well. goes back to G. I told you I would show you the notes in detail, and this is just a short little section here, but the chords from the blues in D are D major, G major, and A major. Then when we play them as full dominant seventh chords, they sound like this. And we'll look at each one of these individually now. And when we turn the D7 into a tritone shell chord, we took out the root and the fifth, and we were left with these notes. And then we suspended it, didn't we? For the G, the full chord is here. Take out the root and the fifth. You're left with these notes. And then when you suspend it, these are the notes, and it resolves. And how about A? We'll do a little lower. Okay, that's the full A7 chord. And so we take out the root and the fifth, and we're left with the third and the seventh, a shell chord. And if you suspend it by replacing the third with the fourth, you've got a suspended shell chord, right? So those are the notes in question, and you can transfer that into your studies as we go through the blues.
One final little bit of clarification. Sometimes you'll see the word sus, like you'll see D sus, S U S, stands for suspended. So when you see D sus, you know to replace the third with the fourth, and you've got D sus. Or if you see D seven sus, there's D seven, D seven sus. So you'll see that a lot. Sus means suspended. I'd like to throw out one more technique before we wrap this lesson up. I want to show you how we can add a little more rhythm to this suspended tritone chord. Uh, we've been doing this number, which is nice. And we learn to invert it, right? With that little bass line that we worked on. But now I kind of want to steal something from our guitar brothers and sisters uh, and turn this into a real nice rhythmic cop chord like this. It really takes some getting used to to make these movements in your left hand. You have to move kind of like a spider when you do this number. Okay, you get to the note, right? And then you kind of transfer your pinky to hold it because that sound is continuing through while you play the suspension and the resolution. Now you don't always have to do the walk up if that's too difficult to start with. You can go directly to the root. And it provides a little more rhythmic comping which stands for complementary chords underneath the solo, so you can do this number. How about G? <laughs> it's just so much fun to play. Let me actually go all the way through the blues now, and I'm really going to focus on that rhythmic comping. Well, there it is. Another one's in the can. I hope you really enjoyed this lesson. I certainly am honored to be a part of your musical life. This has been a left-hand study on the suspended tritone shell chord. My name is David Sprunger from PlayPianoToday.com. Thanks for watching. Now you know what to do. Go practice.